The pendulum is swinging, whether it's on-site work, whether it's hybrid work, whether it's remote work, it's on the move and it's actually starting to go back the other direction. Let's talk about specifically how to stake your claim as a financial practice so that you can be successful in the environment you wish to create. This is The Rare Advisor, proud to be a part of the Advisor Advancement Network and home of a business model supercharged by recurring and repeatable events. Your host is Mike Walters, CEO of USA Financial. He is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member of SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Hey, today I want to talk about a highly sensitive subject here in the world of business and most specifically as it relates to financial services. Now, in a previous discussion here at the Rare Advisor, I had talked specifically about the uh, the remote work environment, the hybrid approach that, that in all transparency we take here at USA Financial. Uh, and the fact is, I learned along the way just like everybody else did. Generally speaking, you roll things back a few years ago. I'm not a huge fan of the remote work. I think there were certain people who could do it effectively, but the vast majority of people, uh, not so much. Too many distractions at home, not a proper work environment, uh, not, uh, not able to get away from the family, uh, too many other things going on around them, uh, and the king of all of it, not being able to directly interact successfully with their counterparts, with their peers, uh, with their teammates. Now, fast forward into the pandemic. Once we get into the pandemic, we're all pushed into this remote environment. Uh, you know, the whole deal's getting put together with, you know, bubble gum, toothpicks, and chicken wire, and we're making things happen. Uh, then we get to kind of get a bit of a reprieve. We're slowly back into the office. Then we all get pushed out again. By the time we got pushed out the second time, again, transparency on USA Financial's perspective, uh, our tech team had come a long way. A lot of what we needed to work effectively in a remote environment had been addressed. And we created structure around that. We did it in the, in the sense that we literally would approve a remote work environment. You can't just pick up and go work anywhere you want. Uh, you might not have good internet connection. You might have all kinds of distractions. Your background might not be appropriate. Uh, we don't want you working at your kitchen table, distracted by your family. You need to have a space for work. Just like you have a space for work in the office, you have a space for work in the home if you're going to be a professional who embraces remote work or hybrid work. So we get to today's environment and we have embraced hybrid work. Uh, if you live within the, uh, the scope of our footprint geographically for our physical office space, then you are hybrid. We do have a few people who are, you know, mostly remote. Um, but for the most part, I would say we are a hybrid organization. And I think there's some value in that. I've come to learn that there are things uh, and there are people who are equally successful, maybe even more successful in a remote environment or a hybrid environment. There are, however, many who are not, and we've had to deal with that, and we've had to address that, and we've had staff changes because of that. Uh, people have left or been asked to leave in part because of some of that. So there's, it's a big, it's a big conversation. There's a lot to it, but the pendulum of life, the pendulum of business is always swinging. And just as we have swung so hard into a remote environment in this world, into a hybrid environment, where I believe I quoted in previous discussions here on Rare that something in the neighborhood of 75 or 76 percent of businesses have embraced a hybrid environment at this stage. Now we're seeing a pushback in the other direction. Now I'm not condoning these things. I'm, I'm being very transparent. We are a hybrid organization. Our intention is to likely stay that way, but we have to hire and manage people who are successful in a hybrid organization then versus hiring people who are successful in an on-site, fully on-site organization or a fully remote organization. Those are different things. So if someone's unsuccessful in a remote environment, then they've got to be on-site whether that's a hybrid organization or not a hybrid organization. So again, lots to contemplate here. Think about your staff, what you need them to do, what needs to happen on site versus what can happen 
remote or in a hybrid environment, how that portrays itself to your customers and how your service matrix is being supported. And how can you track the fact that your service matrix is truly being supported and delivered upon? So those are big questions. Uh, but right now, I just want to talk about this pendulum for a moment. So we know the pendulum and the pandemic. I'm not going to bore you with those details. Now the pendulum, interestingly enough, is starting to come back. Very seldom do I quote and read to you news sources, but I'm going to have to read a couple of these bullets to you. Uh, this is from an Axios article on June 5th uh, in their economy and business section. <clears throat> it says remote work may not be working anymore. A growing number of corporate executives want to put an end to the remote or to excuse me, want to put an end to the work from home revolution. But workers have gotten used to that flexibility. And they are looking to leverage that, which makes total sense. We've discussed about that before. Now, the Tesla CEO, Elon Musk, gets tons of, you know, tons of social media coverage and such and news coverage, as you know. He stirred the pot with a very blunt warning that workers have to spend a minimum of 40 hours per week in the office or they can go find a new job. So basically, he's saying you need to work a full week in the office. If you're working beyond 40 hours and you want to do that remotely or hybrid or whatever offsite, you can do that. But he's basically demanding or claiming he's demanding uh, that 40 hours in uh, in a work on-site environment. <clears throat> now, interestingly, a March survey which canvassed 200 New York-based C-suite executives found that 76% think in-person work is essential to the bottom line. Now, this starts getting into a discussion that you may want to have if you've got children or grandchildren about the merits, especially at younger ages, of getting proper training, being inundated with your team, and pushing those younger people to an on-site environment because leadership is seeing that as an issue. We've talked about that before, but here it's kind of getting reiterated, if you will, that 76% of these executives are saying that in-person work is essential to the bottom line. So the challenge is, at least in my humble opinion, how do you embrace a hybrid environment that is highly personally interactive? Now, Zoom and MS Teams and all these other tools that allow you to have a visual conversation have helped immensely as opposed to a telephone or an email which gets a little less personal. Uh, you can't see the face, you can't see the expressions and so on. And I've, I've warned and challenged people, don't turn your videos off. I mean, it's one thing to mute your microphone just so that other people aren't getting distractive background noises over microphones. It's another thing to delete your video because now the only thing people are wondering is what in the hell you're doing? Because they're assuming the worst. They're assuming you're not doing what you should be doing, focusing on the meeting, the event, the, the appointment, whatever the case might be. So anyway, I digress. Now, it says the convenience of hybrid working is being tempered by the limits of these virtual collaborations, the things I just talked about, working through Zoom and so on. So empirical data is starting to identify some chinks in the armor here. So one University of Chicago study found that remote workers put in longer hours but were less productive. So that's bad on both sides, right? You don't, as, a, as an individual, you don't want to be working longer. You want to be working the same or even less potentially if you're that much more effective. And that's the argument that has been presented, generally speaking, prior to this by kind of the remote worker advocates is that, hey, I'm, I'm, I can concentrate better. I'm less distracted and I can focus and I can get more done in less time or I can get more done in the same amount of time. So this study is potentially saying that's not so true. You're actually working more hours and being less productive. Now, again, that's that's an average. Doesn't mean a specific individual isn't isn't different than that, obviously. Now, here's what really is, I think, the crux of the issue, and they give it a glancing blow. I think this is huge. The effects that they just discussed, the fact that people are putting longer hours and are less productive, it was especially pronounced among parents especially pronounced among parents, a.k.a. distraction. When they're home, they're mom and dad. When they're at the office, they're your peer. If the child is coming to them 
it's hard to say no. This is why, at least in our opinion, my opinion at USA Financial, distractions are the key or elimination of distractions are the key to successful hybrid and remote work. You have to have a work environment, right? I need some place in my home to effectively work. The kitchen table doesn't do it. The third bedroom probably doesn't do it. Uh, I need a spot that becomes my den, becomes my away from the office office. It has to be physically designed and structured, and you have to have the technological connections, the internet service that works effectively, the background that looks good on video, uh, you know, all of these fake backgrounds with the green screen and stuff, people can tell, and it generally doesn't look good. So I recommend real backgrounds that are actually appropriate rather than hiding the background because you're working from somewhere that maybe you shouldn't be working from. And unfortunately, you know, we're human. So if we're a parent and our child is coming to us throughout the day, it's hard to lock them out. And that's a big issue with remote work. Um, workers spent uh, have been spending, it claims, more time in meetings, uh, but they've lost the face time with their managers and leadership and so on. So again, you might be in a ton of Zoom meetings, but are they as effective as personal meetings? So Microsoft... Also ran a study uh, towards the end of 2021, September of 2021, and they found that the software giant's business units became, quote, less interconnected over time. And then an over-reliance on email and messaging made it more difficult for workers to convey and or converge on the meaning of complex information. Again, they weren't in the same room together, so the correspondence and the interaction wasn't the same, and therefore the results weren't the same. A WebEx study published uh, a month or so ago said high degrees of meeting fatigue uh, are occurring among remote workers because now, again, instead of going from phone call to phone call or email to email, you're going from physical appointment to physical appointment uh, and you're doing it remotely. So you can't, you know, it's not like you can just have a quick, oh, by the way, chat with someone. You have to set it up and run a Zoom meeting or run a WebEx meeting and get connected with them. So it's it's an interesting change that has taken place and it's taking place in historically rapid fashion because of the pandemic. So it's becoming increasingly apparent that Zoom and Google Chat are not substitutes for in-person dynamics that bridge communication gaps and help build careers and businesses. So it's a pendulum, right? I don't think the answer is at either end of the extreme, it seldom is. The answer is somewhere in the middle, and you have to desert, determine where do you want to stake your claim in that middle ground? Are you 100% on site? Are you 100% remote? Or are you like the majority of the world today, and you're somewhere in between with a hybrid embracing of the environment? But key is building structure around what you want to be when you grow up. If you don't build the structure, you're not going to be successful in a hybrid environment. That means technological structure. That means communication structure. That means calendar structure on how you're going to interact and when you're going to interact. Uh, and I would personally recommend getting people together. Even if you're heavily weighted towards remote, you need to get people together face-to-face -face in real life periodically in order to get the most out of your people in order to deliver the most opportunity to your people and in order to grow your business and your practice. This information is for licensed financial professionals only and is not intended for use in soliciting sales from the public. The views expressed represent the opinions of the presenter or their featured guest, not necessarily those of USA Financial or its affiliated subsidiaries. Industry references are generic and not intended to represent actions or beliefs of any individual or entity. Content is only presented to illustrate general principles, beliefs, or ideas and should not be construed as legal or regulatory advice. Trademark and copyright protected. USA Financial and Affiliates.